Ngayon ay magsasagot naman tayo ng mga antiderivatives ng function using substitution method. Sa so problem number one, meron tayong integral ng x all over x squared plus 4 dx. So, this problem, pwede ko siyang i-modify para mas makita ko kung ano yung pwede kong gamitin as my function u into x dx all over x squared plus 4. So, in this case, I'm going to use yung denominator, which is x squared plus 4, as my u. At ang derivative niya, which is du, i 2x dx. So, mapapansin nyo na yung x dx meron tayo dito sa numerator at meron din tayong x dx dito sa du natin. The only problem is meron tayong 2 na coefficient ng x dx. So, para maging identical yung dalawa, multiply natin ng 1 half yung both sides para makancel si 2 giving us 1 half du is equal to x dx. So, si x dx ngayon, which is here in our numerator, can be changed into 1 half du. So, pwede natin ngayon i-modify yung function natin into integral of 1 half times du all over u. Kasi yung u natin is x squared plus 4. So, ngayon, meron na tayong integral function na consistent. Derivative of u with respect to u at yung constant na 1 half. So, yung 1 half, pwede natin siyang ilabas at meron tayong ngayon derivative ng u with respect to u. At kailangan natin kunin yung antiderivative niya. So, alam natin na ang antiderivative ng 1 over u, du, i, ln u. So, 1 half times ln u plus c ang ating antiderivative. At yung ating u, para maging consistent yung answer natin, ibabalik natin si x squared plus 4. So we have 1 half ln of absolute value of x squared plus 4 plus c. So yan yung pagsagot ng uh, antiderivative using substitution method. Now, let's answer problem number two. So, problem number two, kunin natin yung antiderivative ng 3x plus 2 raised to 2.4 dx. So, in this case, alam natin na usually yung ating u variable will be inside the parentheses or inside a radical or inside a um, parentheses na merong power. So, u is equal to 3x plus 2. At ang derivative ng u natin ay 3 dx. Now, mapapansin nyo sa original function meron tayong dx at meron tayong dx dito. So, pwede natin siyang i-change as du. Pero yung 3 natin, since kailangan consistent siya, multiply by 1 third on both sides. Para meron tayong 1 third du equal to dx. So, ngayon yung dx natin mapapaltan ngayon ng 1 third du. So, to modify our integral function, yung u natin, so 3x plus 2, magiging u na yan, will be integral of u raised to 2.4. Yung dx natin, magiging 1 third times du. So using the properties of antiderivative, since constant si 1 third, labas natin siya. So, kukunin ngayon natin yung derivative ng, or antiderivative ng u to the 2, raised to the 2 fourth. So, magkakaroon tayo ng u raised to 3.4 all over 3.4 plus c. So, ito ngayon yung antiderivative ng ating function. And if you want to simplify, we can multiply 3 and 3.4 giving us 1 over 10 times u raised to 
3.4 plus C. Uh, 3.4 times C is 10.2. And since we want it to be consistent dun sa ating function, ibalik natin si 3x plus 2 sa u. So we have 1 all over 10.2, um, 3x plus 2 raised to 3.4 plus C. So ito ngayon yung sa problem number 2. Now, so problem number 3, meron tayong e to the u function at meron din tayong trig function. So, yung number 3, kukunin natin yung integral ng e to the cosine theta sine theta d theta. I-modify ko ulit yung aking integral function para mas madali kong makita yung gagamitin kong value na u. So, ito, nakakakita ko ng tatlong separate function, yung e to the cosine theta, sine theta, at saka yung d theta. So, we can rewrite it as e cosine theta times sine theta times d theta. So, ang gagamitin kong variable u ko ay cosine theta at pag kinuha ko yung derivative ng u, kukunin ko yung derivative ng cosine theta at ang derivative ng cosine theta is negative sine theta d theta now, since naggawa ko na yung differential ko meron akong sine theta at saka d theta meron akong sine theta at saka d theta pero since negative siya, ililipat ko siya dun sa du para consistent ulit yung aking function doon sa aking original function. So, yung magiging function ko ngayon will be integral of e to the u times yung sine theta natin magiging negative du. Or, we can rewrite this as integral of e to the u du. At sa integral rule natin, ang e to the u ay e to the u plus c. So, our answer will be one on negative e to the u plus c. And since we want it to be consistent with our original integral function, we can write it as e to the cosine theta plus c. So, yan yung sa problem number 3. Now, so number four, meron ulit tayong rational function. So, to rewrite the function, we'll have number four. Pwede natin siyang isulat as x plus one dx all over x squared plus two x cubed. So, in this way, mas makikita natin yung ating u function later on. So, kung ang u natin na nasa parentheses ay x squared plus 2x, at kukunin natin yung derivative ng u, derivative ng u ay derivative ng x squared to 2x, so we have 2x plus 2 dx. So, ito yung ating differential base dun sa ating equation na u. Now, since yung x plus 1 dx ay hindi kaparehas ni 2x plus 2 dx, pwede natin siyang i-modify using algebra or factoring. Ilabas natin si 2 at meron tayo ngayong x plus 1 dx. So ngayon, identical na siya sa ating numerator. Kailangan lang natin ilabas si 2 so magkakaroon tayo ng 1 half du equals x plus 1 dx. So, ang ating bagong integral function will be x plus 1 dx is 1 half du will be 1 half times du all over u raised to 3. So, ito ngayon yung ating i-integrate. So, yung 1 half ilalabas natin gamit ang constant rule. At meron tayo ngayon u to the negative 3 du. At ang antiderivative ng u to the negative 3 ay u to the negative 2 over 2. So, we'll have 1 over 2 times u to the negative 2 all over negative 2 plus c. At to simplify our function, multiply natin yung denominator. We'll have 1 fourth negative times 1 
over u squared plus c. At yung u natin is x squared plus 2x, so our final answer will look like this. Or if you want to put them together, pwede natin siyang i-rewrite as 4. At ito yung integral ng ating function. 